Hey everyone, welcome back to I2R CNC. This is Sunny, and in this part one video, I'll be showing you how to import this 3D Medusa file into VCarve Pro 10. Part two will cover the actual machining using the UC CNC on our I2R. Everything I cover here also pertains to you if you have Aspire 10. So, how do we import a STL file? If you are not familiar with 3D files and how to create the components and just creating your own file, that's okay, it's not the end of the world. What I did here is I simply went on Google and I usually look at yegi.com or thingiverse.com. So if you look here on Thingiverse, I found this 3D STL file for a Medusa head and it's a plate that I'm gonna go ahead and make. It's free. You can tip the designer. In this case, this one was made by CNC Miles for you. And you can download it once you have an account. So let's go back to VCarve here. This file I have, I've already measured out my workpiece. And I know that it's going to be 11 inches by 11 inches. And I know the thickness is one inch. We'll keep that for inches. We're gonna start from the Z0 position, which is the material surface on the top. And we like to work from the center of the work material. I'm gonna click OK. And the difference here is I'm gonna go into modeling. And with the modeling, I'm gonna go ahead and import a component or 3D model. And I have this one saved. Right here, Medusa. We're going to open it and what's going to happen here is it's going to take me to the Orientate 3D model. We have the full component that was designed in the 3D environment on a different platform. So this looks kind of awkward, which is why we have this Orientate 3D model. We're going to set it the way we want it so that it fits our CNC, which is the I2I. So, Initial orientation, I'm gonna go with the left. Okay, so that flattens it out from the bird's eye view. And I'm gonna add 90 degrees. Okay, I'm happy with that. You'll notice your Z, which will allow you to adjust it along the view. And then you have your X and Y on the right of that. But I like the way this looks. So we're gonna keep going down this list and the interactive rotation, I think we're fine the way we are. I just kind of did that. Now, key thing here is the model size. This is where you're going to adjust the X and the Y and the Z. So, as mentioned before, we measured 11 inches by 11 inches and 1 inch on the Z. So, keeping the XYZ ratio the same, I'm going to go ahead and just put in 10 because I want it to be a little bit smaller. I'm going to click apply. And then this looks okay to me. Now I'm gonna uncheck the X, Y, and Z ratio. And I wanna make this one inch because that's the maximum thickness of my material. I want it all to fit. Okay, that looks good. And I'm gonna center the model. Notice how there's this red box. You wanna keep your design inside within the limit of that box. So let's center this and you'll see that it centered the model directly in the middle of that red box. Now, coming down here to the zero plane position model, you can notice that the face of Medusa is like sticking up and it's colored, everything else grayed out. So at this point, since everything's grayed out, what that is saying is it would only cut out this portion of the face which we want the entire model so what we'll do here is we can actually bring down the depth below and you'll see the rest of the model coming up toward us so a safe practice is if you just pull this all the way down you'll notice there's no more gray matter so we know everything is going to be cut. Changing the view real quick, we'll move into the Y. Click, we'll put it there. 
Now, if you look at this black solid line that goes across the center of the model, that is your zero plane line. Anything that you adjust that goes below that line will not be cut. Also, if you were to check this box and we were to make this 0.84, this part of the model below that line will be cut away. We'll just keep it unchecked. Make this the full one inch as we mentioned earlier and we'll click OK. Now here's your model. That is what we should expect to see when we throw it on our I2R8 with the UCCNC controller and here is your 2D view, which you can go ahead and manipulate if you needed to, just like in Vetrix.3D clip. If you go to your components and then under level 1, this is your shape height that we had just set, which is 1 inch from what we had entered. Now if you wanted to adjust it, I'm just going to do this for a demo purpose real quick. From the Y view, if we made this 0.84 as I mentioned earlier and hit enter, watch what happens. The face actually gets flattened. So that is also another reason why I was recommending just pulling that Z0 plane all the way down so you get the full benefit of the whole material thickness being used. I've clicked into the 2D view here and what I'm going to do now is select my 3D component and click on the create vector boundary. You'll notice that right here, it's created a vector around the entire border of my model. And what this is doing is since we're already in the 2D view, we're gonna create a profile toolpath that will cut out the project at the end of our machining job. Now let's go ahead and check our material setup. The material is one inch still. We're working from the center, the Z0 is material surface, the model position in the material looks good, everything else looks good. And we'll go ahead to the toolpath, cut depth is one inch, we'll be using a end mill which is a quarter inch, and the pass depth here is 0.125 inches. The step over doesn't really matter in this case. The spindle speed we're using is 24,000 RPM. And the feed rate, let's go with 1200 millimeters per minute and an 800 millimeter per minute plunge. Since we're cutting out the material, I'd rather go slower and increase it later. The machine vector, we want to make sure we're cutting outside of the line, our project. Now we'll add the tabs. And with the tabs here, we're going to use 0.125. And the thickness, we'll go with 0.1. And we'll create one here, one here, one here, here, and one here. Close. We don't need any ramps. We'll click calculate. And we'll go from the down view. So now you can see from our preview that it'll cut out the entire shape of our project. I'm also going to rename this so I don't get confused later. Quarter inch 0.25 EM for end mill cut out. Okay. Now moving on. Back here with our 3D model. The first thing we want to do here is we're going to do a roughing job. And then after the roughing job, we'll go ahead and use our 3D finishing toolpath. In this case, since we're using the I2R, the I2R UCCNC's largest bit we'll take is a quarter inch. So we're going to start with the quarter inch. And it's going to be same thing. We're going to use a end mill here. Here's our end mill, and I'm actually going to increase the 
feed rate for this one and I'm gonna go ahead and use 2000 millimeters and we'll go with 900 millimeter just know that the wood I'm using is rather soft compared to most other hardwoods so your feed and your speed will vary I would probably start with 1500 millimeters per minute if you have a harder wood and then move up to around 2000 and for the plunge rate I'm gonna keep it between 700 to 900 before moving on, let me explain why we do the roughing toolpath in the first place. So when roughing, we'll use a larger bit to clear away the excess material that's too deep for our smaller 3D finishing tool to remove in one pass. And since we're using a larger bit, we can shave off all that excess material a lot faster. And that leads me to my next point about 3D machining is you'll always be trading between the time it takes to machine and the quality of the finish of your project. So keep that in mind. And we'll move on. And machining limit boundary. For the most part, you'll want to use the model boundary as it will only cut away what's needed for your project as opposed to the material boundary as seen here right below it. That will literally machine away everything from your stock material which will lead to a much longer cutting time you'll want to pick between the two depending on what your project entails and moving down to machining allowance I have my machining allowance set to 0 0.02 inches and that's so it'll prevent the aggressiveness from my rough cut from chipping the material and also it'll make sure there is still some material left behind for the final 3D finishing pass to complete a nice clean cut. Roughing strategy, you have two options. One is Z-Level, which is the one I'm using for this project, and 3D Raster. The 3D Raster is a three-dimensional strategy, which you'll see here if I click Calculate, it will resemble a more familiar look that's closer to your end goal. Uh, the difference here though is if you're going to go with the 3D raster strategy, it is more beneficial because it will leave a more even amount of material for the finish cut to remove. But depending on the depth and the style you're trying to go with on your project, the amount of time will vary. Now if we go back and we go back to the Z level and I click calculate you'll see the difference in what I'm talking about here. With my roughing toolpath created I'm gonna go ahead and rename this to 0.25 EM for end mill it's the same end mill I'm using to cut out the entire piece. And I'm gonna call this roughing. Enter, and then I'm gonna click the up arrow to bring that up to my first toolpath. Now, we're gonna get into the final part of the project, which is the 3D finishing toolpath. You might be wondering which bit and what size is best for 3D finishes. To answer that question, it really depends on how big your project is and also how detailed you want your finished model to be. Generally, you want to use a ball nose with a step over of between 8 to 15 percent. And the best way to figure that out is just to use the 3D preview function to check on the finished quality of your job. Just remember, that the smaller the step over, the longer amount of time it will take to complete the project. So I'm clicking here and I'm using a tapered ball nose which is a 1 16th inch with a 7 degree angle. I'm having a 10% step over and my spindle speed is still 24,000 RPM. I'm using 1200 millimeters per minute and I'm plunging at 800 millimeters per minute. For the machining limit boundary, I'm still gonna go with model boundary. And 
For area machine strategy, you'll notice that there's a offset and a raster option. With offset, you'll be able to select if you want the cutting direction to be a climb or conventional. You'll notice that they, they change in the direction once you select one or the other. The best way to get this is to just ask your supplier of your bit for the best setting. With raster, you can set the raster angle at which you want the machine to cut. So for example, it's at zero degrees right now. If I just select it, it'll go along the X axis up and down. And on the other hand, if I were to change that to 90 degrees, it would go along the Y from right to left in this case. So you'll see on the preview right here, that it's gonna raster from bottom to top. Now, if I change this to 90, calculate. This will go from right to left. In this case, if you did a raster, it's saying that it would take about the same time as if I were to do an offset. So with offset, this is what I'm going to use for my project. It's going to start from the middle and calculate the toolpath. And that's what I expect to see on my CNC. So it's going to take just under five hours to complete this 3D finish. What I'm going to do is I'm also going to rename this 1 16th TB for tapered ball nose 3D finish. I'm going to hit enter. And I'm gonna bring this to the second position because that's where I'm gonna go ahead and change out the tool from the quarter inch end mill after I do my roughing. Then I'm gonna put in the one and 16th inch tapered ball nose for my 3D finish. And then the third one, I'm gonna go ahead and put back that quarter inch end mill for the cutout. So if I were to preview all of it, it would look like this. have the quarter inch end mill roughing out and then the tapered ball nose for the 3D finish. And then the cutout along the outside and you see the tabs that we inserted earlier. And we're cutting all the way through. From here, we could go ahead and save each one, but you'll have to save each of them separately. So with this first one, we're going to click save and we're using the Mach 23 arcs millimeter for the UCCNC. I'll do this for the roughing toolpath first and then save the following 3D finish and the profile cutout individually. So this concludes part one of the video. Stay tuned for part two, where I move on to machining the Medusa plate on the I2R8 UCCNC. Thanks for watching and leave any feedback below. Until next time.